In June 2013, the U.S. Supreme Court removed Section 5 of the Federal Voting Rights Act, a 50-year-old law that prevented states from excluding voters because of race. Just 48 hours later, North Carolina lawmakers had rewritten state election laws. Thousands of African Americans lost their right to vote. This is their story. Early voting is a marvelous way to expand participation in the voting process. And shouldn't it be the goal of our country, of our state, and even the local elections, to get as much participation as possible? I'm Gregory K. Moss, and I am the former pastor of the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church of Charlotte, North Carolina. We thought since we could get Sunday voting, it was a natural extension to organize the churches to participate on those Sundays. So we started calling it Souls to the Poor. We had buses, we had cars. Uh, the only thing we didn't have was horse and buggy. I rode a motorcycle uh, with a friend of mine and led the caravan. When the law was passed and cut down the, you know, the number of days that we had opportunity for early voting, it adversely affected Souls to the Pole because it cut out a Sunday that we would have to take advantage of it. I think it's the deliberate attempt on the powers that be to suppress the vote. This bill, 589, from the beginning was intended to affect and diminish African American votes, college student votes, and votes of people of color uh, across the board. Early voters try to cast their ballots before the deadline. Look at all the early voters lined up in downtown Durham and back in Raleigh. The line here wrapped around the corner. Now early voting is a week shorter than it was two years ago. Some attribute those long lines to the cutting back of early voting time. When you cut back by a third the early vote capacity, you are re-engaging in the lines you were trying to stop. And sure enough, of course, in some places in the state, particularly urban areas, that's precisely what occurred. At a minimum, 30 to 40,000 people statewide who tried to vote were not able to vote. And that doesn't begin to capture the people that we just don't know about. These vote suppression efforts are not new. And there's actually a long tradition of that in North Carolina. Fundamental change that happened in July of 2013 was the Supreme Court saying that that protection, Section 5, is no longer constitutional because of the way um, Congress reauthorized it in 2006. And so we see not only statewide laws, but a multiplicity of places where decisions are made about how voting is going to happen and how our democracy is structured no longer have that anti-discrimination guarantee. Mm -hmm.